Well, since it started its national tour in September of 92, the Family Channel blimp has delighted thousands of spectators with aerials over uh, fairs and festivals and sporting events in more than 90 cities, 35 states. There it is, the Family Channel blimp providing the overhead shots for us today here at Bristol. Well, Dale Jarrett has fallen to sixth position, and uh, look at this. The second, Bob, from what they were running earlier. What's the problem, Bill? Matt Dale just can't get off the corner anymore. They've been working on this all weekend, and uh, now he's just radioed back to his crew that he's having trouble in the turns, and he just can't get off the corner. They're happy with their run to this point. It's going to be a disappointing finish for him. Davey Adelson won from the back stretch here, the first race in 1990, and they were hoping to pull off another one today. What are you doing, Bill? Spinning the tires off the corner? They're loose off the corner? That's the problem they had last night in final practice, Benny. They were working on that. The change they made on the headers this morning, they were hoping would take care of that, and they believe it has up until this point. But it just now, uh, Dale just doesn't have it coming off the turn anymore. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch of the 24th day. Remember I told you a minute ago that Jeff Gordon said the car was sputtering a little bit, missing, and it would catch back and run okay? Well, he hasn't commented about it missing anymore, but better safe than sorry. Ray Everham and the crew sent a crew member running back to the truck, and they brought back to the pit area a new carburetor just in case they might need it. Hopefully they want, but it's here if they need it, Bob. They've only got 33 laps to go, and this one will be history as Gordon continues to lead. It is interesting to note that when Dale Earnhardt won this race here last year, he took the points lead from Ernie Irvin. Right now, if points were awarded at this moment, Dale Earnhardt would not be in the points lead, but he would be five behind Sterling Marlin, who is running in fourth position. And Dale Earnhardt is 20, uh, make that 25th. So, we could have a new points leader at the end of this event. And it's amazing how many laps they can run here in a short one. They can run almost or better than 40 laps in about 10 minutes, Benny, something like that. About 40 laps in 10 minutes. Right now we have 30 laps to go, and this race is going to be over in less than, in less than 10 minutes if there's not a caution play. And Jeff Gordon, as you can see, is about to lap the 43 car of Bobby Hamilton running eighth, but his separation back to second place his advantage over mark martin is almost four seconds yeah he's only lost about a tenth of a second in the last since the last time we clocked him which was about 20 or 25 laps ago so he's not really losing at this time so he can't afford to sit behind oh what, and what happened to jeff as he came off the corner i think he got a little bit i think he lost traction got a little bit sideways and backed off of him and said hey i don't need to be trying to be a hero here and straighten that thing out. He just backed off and let her straighten out and then come back at him again. And he was right on the back bumper of the 43 and all of a sudden the car just slipped. Now the 43 is trying to get by this. Yeah, that's a problem. Right now the 43 car is trying to get by the 17. The 17 trying to get by the 28. You know, they're not as concerned about Jeff Morgan as they are themselves. All right, they're going to try to hold their position. Bobby Hamilton, I guarantee he doesn't care when who wins this race. <laughs> get That's right. Would be it Jeff Gordon or Martin Martin. Yeah, I think Dale's holding them up a little bit there. Just right now. Just, uh, just as Bill Weber pointed out, just not when he's off the corner. He's got plenty of horsepower there. Daryl comes down on the side. And the train will go by. Yep. Door is open. It is just about 4 o'clock Eastern time for those of you joining us. Welcome to the closing laps of the Blue City 500. Only 24 to go. The leader is on the right side of your screen. That is Jeff Gordon, car number 24. In one half hour at 4.30, our Shot Talk presentation tonight or this afternoon will feature Bill Elliott, who is 14th, three laps down. Bobby Hamilton has moved into that seventh spot. Darrell off to the sixth. There we see the Autolite field summary. Now there's just eight cars in the blue lap. Now Dale Jerry is actually lapped down, so seven cars now in the blue lap. Yeah, seven cars. It looks like Jeff Gordon is kind of content to follow these two cars. 
Ricky Rudd is reporting that his car is very loose. Rollins goes inside of Rick Mast. Here comes Rudd right behind. Excuse me, Ned. Rick Master. Darrell Waltrip has caught Ricky Rudd. That Rudd, Rudd driving a loose car. Here goes Darrell on the inside. Takes that spot away. Is a 43 car going to be able to get it? He can't. So Darrell moves to fifth now. And you see Jeff Gordon, they're not out running Jeff Gordon right now. Jeff has just backed off and said, these guys are racing for position. I'm not going to get up there because right now Mark Martin is not gaining on me. I might be even gaining on, on Mark Martin, the second place car. So let these guys race. I'll ride to the end, which is only 17 laps from now. 17 laps to go. That is exactly the message that the crew is conveying to Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he's almost six seconds ahead now, so he is gaining on me. Mark Martin, so he does not need to take any chances whatsoever. Darrell Walter beginning to draw away from these two. If Walter can stay in fifth position, it'll be his 25th top five here at Bristol. It's a 5.6 second interval between Jeff Gordon and second place Mark Martin. Bobby Hamilton looking on the inside. He has a spot. Passing Ricky run for sixth place. That would equal his yes. best. I'll never finish yep. if he finishes there. But that's yep. the fifth on his mind because he walked right there with Darrell Walker before they got into all that traffic. Well, there is fifth right ahead of him, Sterling yep. Marlin. Both coming up on a lot of traffic. And just Well, actually, Darrell has passed Sterling. He'll take over yeah, fourth. That's right. He's in fourth position now. Marlin back to fifth. And Hamilton is closed up right Evidently, Sterling Marlin finding a loose condition. Push something. But now Ricky Rudd comes back on Hamilton. And they get jammed up with slower traffic. In sixth and seventh. And Jimmy Spencer on the outside of the 23 car letting those guys go. Hamilton trying, trying to get alongside. Takes a look on the inside of the four car. He's going to take this spot away for fifth. How about that? Bobby Hamilton goes to fifth position. He was a lap down at one time. Yep. Great run. Looking for his highest finish ever in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. And there goes Rudd also to the inside of Sterling Marlin and putting Marlin back to seventh. That means that Dale Earnhardt, if, he, if things go continue, will still be leading the points when this thing is over. That is correct by nine. If points were awarded right now, Earnhardt would have a nine. And Mark Martin advantage. is slow. Mark Martin is coming into the pits. He's got a flat tire. Wow. Mark giving up second position here with ten laps to go because of a flat tire. Oh, man. The right rear tire is flat on the six car. Man. Just a terrible break for Mark Martin, who started from the pole and ran up in the top two or three most of the race. It'll be a quick tire change on the right side, and Mark goes back out onto the racetrack, but he is a lap down. There is the leader, Jeff Gordon, eight laps to go. This is a guy that we have watched grow up on ESPN from Thursday night and Saturday night thunder. But if he wins this race today, it'll be his first victory on ESPN. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He's won a couple of races that we've been involved in on ABC, but he's never won an ESPN race. Well, actually, Mark Martin is two laps down now. He yeah, lost another one. He, he lost a lap as he was coming into the pits and then changing the tire, lost another lap. California grew up in what, what's he doing Whoa, way up there? Doing? Man, there's loose stuff up there, Jeff Boy. <laughs> That'll get you in trouble in a hurry. Just five laps to go. I tell you what, Mark Martin had a tire go down. You know, could Jeff Gordon be having to say, oh, 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 oh. And nice he's saved by Robert Presley. <laughs> oh, man. Man, man. Dale Garrett unlapping himself from Jeff Gordon. Now, whether Jeff just backed off that much, he probably has. 
There, Mark Martin getting one of his laps back. With Rusty, or rather Mark Martin uh, in for a pit stop. That puts Rusty Wallace in second, and this man, Darrell Waltrip, in third, followed by Hamilton and Rudd. There is Mark Martin just ahead of the 24 car. Tough break has dropped him down to nine. Sterling Marlin is all over the track. I think he has a flat tire. He must have a flat tire. The right rear is flat. The right rear is flat on the four car. But there's only two more laps to go. And he'll ride it out. One would think that he would. Jeff, Jeff Ward all Burton. over the track. Yeah, Ward Burton had to slam on the brakes right behind him. But Jeff Gordon, you know that his tires is it's white flag for Gordon. One more lap for Jeff. But anything can happen. The 12 car is up in front of him. I think he has a flat tire going into turn three. But he's up high on the racetrack. Here comes Jeff off the fourth corner. Is he going to win it? Yes, he will. Jeff Gordon takes the checkered flag and wins his first career short track. And look at Darrell Waltrip lead Bobby Hamilton down. And Waltrip, by a car length, falls on for third. Here's John Kernan. With Ray Everham and Ray... Were you worried at all? I mean, you saw Martin come in with a flat tire, Sterling apparently a flat tire. Yeah, we were we were really worried, you know, but um, like I always say, got to thank God first and uh, everybody else second. You know, Jeff drove a great race. These guys did a great job in the pits. Goodyear brought us an excellent tire, and, you know, I, I really thought that we were beat today, but we kept working on that thing, and um, that kid's an awesome driver. I really can't tell you. He's, he's really got this team pumped up. Well, you remember what Ray said last year, being with Jeff Gordon is like winning the lottery. <laughs> the young man who grew up in Indiana because that was one of the few states that allow a 13-year-old to drive a sprint car. Jeff Gordon has won for the third time this year in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. He is still in his car in victory lane, and in just a moment, he's going to be stepping out of the car. Here he is to the thunderous applause of the crowd. Hey! Yeah! Here's Jerry Punch. And their hand slapping and congratulating down here in, the, in victory lane as Gordon gets up. And yeah, he wants those folks to be able to see. Congratulations, uh, Jeff, on not standing up. Hey, this uh, this just took this team to a new level. Uh, you know, short tracks where we've always had our trouble. We've always had our problems here at Bristol. And uh, I'm just <laughs> I'm just happy all four fenders are left on this thing. That, that was our goal. And, Man, we've had good cars here in the past, but uh, you know this, this is wonderful. I, I gotta gotta thank Dupont Automotive Fishes. They they've been great. Gotta thank Valvoline. The Goodyear tires were, were excellent, and uh, gotta say hi, hey to Coca Cola too. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna ask you with 100 laps to go. Mark was leading the race. You're running second, and suddenly you just zipped by and took off. Were you holding back and sort of saving the car? No, not at all. Uh, you know, I, my car just took a while to come in, and we never ran long enough green flag laps. My car was tight. It was tight. These guys kept loosening up, loosening up all day long. And all of a sudden, that last stop, they, they got it just right. It wasn't very good uh, on new tires. And them guys got out away from me. But all of a sudden, man, that thing just, I don't know what. <laughs> it's like it, it just hooked onto a rail and just took off. I mean, it was driving itself. My foot fell asleep. And uh, it was hurting so bad before I got by Mark. And then after I got by Mark, I didn't even know I had it asleep. And it's still hurting. A little race car medicine. Now, we heard you comment that the car may have had a miss or sputtered a little bit, and the guys in the pit started scrambling, looking for carburetors. And what was that? I have no idea. You know, I, I didn't know how far we could go on gas. I thought maybe we ran out of gas. Uh, I switched the, the ignition boxes, never never felt it again. Uh, you know, it's a scary, scary moment. But, you know, when it's your day, it's your day. Nobody's going to take it away from you. At Bristol International Raceway, the Food City 500 has been won by Jeff Gordon. And here is a full field rundown showing you where the entire field finished. By the way, Jeff Gordon led 204 of the 500 laps here today. The average speed of the race, almost 92 miles an hour. And for Jeff Gordon, as we indicated, it's his third victory in six events this year. And as you can see, a lot of drivers had uh, had trouble, finished uh, pretty far down the line, but they kept getting their cars fixed and getting back out there and making laps. Dale Earnhardt started when he had his accident. He was 36th in the field, back on the racetrack, lost one more lap and finished 25th, gained 11 spots for 33 points. And officially, only three cars were out of the race when the checkered flag dropped.
Congratulations to Jeff Gordon on his third win of 1995 for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch. This is Bob Jenkins. Thanks for joining us for now. So long, everyone.